And now, the National Broadcasting Company presents Inspector Thorne in The Defrosted Refrigerator Murder Clue. Tonight, the National Broadcasting Company presents the exploits of the spectacular young Inspector Thorne of the Homicide Bureau. Those investigations rank with many of the most celebrated ones in the annals of crime fiction. An investigator is smart enough to claim he is dumb and modest enough to believe it. Tonight, Inspector Thorne turns to the defrosted refrigerator murder clue. The scene is the kitchen of a large home, and standing before an electric refrigerator, we see a charming young woman, obviously quite out of her element in a kitchen, her costly frock protected only by a small apron. She is Marcia Winters, wife of the wealthy banker Arnold Winters. And as she opens the refrigerator door, we hear her say to herself, Oh, another kitchen job that I hate. This refrigerator needs defrosting again. <laughs> How my friends would laugh, seeing me of all people. The glamorous young wife of old money bags Arnold Winters doing kitchen work. But I have my reasons. Marsha? Well, Emily, my own darling sister in law. I came here for a showdown with you, Marsha. A showdown, Emily? What about? I'm your husband's sister. And you are his wife. Oh, nothing for us to quarrel about there, Emily. Both are a matter of record. We're practically sisters. Sisters forget their sisters when they're both infatuated with the same man. What do you mean by that? You know what I mean, Marsha. I warn you to let my fiancé, Eric Stevenson, alone. Or All right, you asked for it. Eric Stevenson is not your man. He's mine. Mine, I tell you. And we have plans that don't take you into account. You're married to my brother. I'll tell him the whole thing. I can wrap him around my finger. He won't believe you. Listen, Marsha. You'll put Eric Stevenson out of your life or I'll... I'll... I'll kill you! Emily, put down that knife. I'm going to kill you with this kitchen knife. Emily, stop! I promise anything you ask. Anything. All I want is for you to stay away from Eric Stevenson. I promise never to see Eric again. Now, give me that knife, Emily. You swear never to see Eric again? Yes. Yes. All right. Here's the knife. Now, I have the knife. And you have a promise I don't intend to keep. Get out, Emily, or I'll call the police and accuse you of trying to murder me. Get out. I'll get out. But you haven't heard the last of this, Marsha. You'll never get Eric Stevenson. <laughs> And now, one hour later, in the same house where this violent scene between sisters-in-law took place, we see the husband in the case, frenziedly speaking into the telephone as he says, Hello. Hello. Is this the police? My wife's been murdered. I just found her. Do you hear me? She's been murdered. Hold on. I'll switch you to the homicide bureau. All right, all right, but hurry. Hello. Inspector Thorne of Homicide speaking. This is Arnold Winters. My wife, Marsha, has been murdered. I'll be out instantly. The address is... If you're Arnold Winters, the banker, I know your address already. Ring the bell, Sergeant Muggin. Okay, Inspector Thorne. Come in. Come in. I'm Arnold Winters. I suppose you're Inspector Thorne. Yes. And this is Sergeant Muggin. Good afternoon, sir. You said on the phone you found your wife murdered. When was that? When I came home from work just ten minutes ago, Inspector Thorne. That would be 2.45. Do you always get home this early, Mr. Winters? What? Oh, no, Inspector Thorne, but today I thought I'd surprise my wife, Marcia. I see. I came in the house and called to her, and when she didn't answer, I went out to the kitchen. She was there, lying right in front of the refrigerator. The kitchen knife sticking in her back. It was horrible. Horrible. Which way is the kitchen? It's right through here, down this hall. Wait here in the living room, please, Mr. Winters. Sergeant Muggin and I will go there. Of course, Inspector Thorne. Here we are, Muggin. This is the kitchen. 
Boy, look at that kitchen knife in it. Mm. Send the knife to the lab for a fingerprint check immediately. Right. Say, look at this water by the refrigerator, Chief. Yeah, it's interesting. The murdered woman must have been in the process of defrosting her refrigerator when she was stabbed. Muggin, does she look like the type of woman to enjoy working in the kitchen? Not by a long shot. That expensive dress she's wearing is certainly not meant for kitchen work. She was sure a lot younger than her husband, Arnold Winters. Yes, that's another interesting point, Muggin. I think I'll have a talk with Arnold Winters right now. Did you discover anything about my wife, Marsha's murder, Inspector Thorne? Nothing yet, Mr. Winters. Did you and your wife have many quarrels? We never quarreled, Inspector Thorne. Marsha and I were ideally happy. Your wife was a great deal younger than you. Marsha was my second wife. I have a son, Bart, by my first marriage. He's 22 now. Oh, uh, is this the servant's day off, Mr. Winters? We have no servants, Inspector Thorne. Marsha said she preferred taking care of her own home. Funny thing for the young wife of a rich banker to do. She was that kind, Inspector Thorne. That's one of the things that made our marriage so ideal. And you came home early to surprise your wife? Yes. Wouldn't a better word for surprise be trap? You came home because you were suspicious of your wife, didn't you, Mr. Winters? I trusted my wife implicitly, Thorne. Oh, Sergeant Muggin, go see who's at the door. Okay, Chief. Are you expecting any callers, Mr. Winters? I'm expecting my sister Emily. I telephoned her right after I called the police. Uh, this way, ma'am. Where is he? Where is my brother? Oh, Arnold. Poor Marsha. I can't believe she's dead. Murdered in the kitchen. Emily, this is Inspector Thorne and Sergeant Muggin. My sister, Emily Winters. How do you do, Miss Winters? Please sit down. Oh, Inspector Thorne, how could anyone do such a dreadful thing? Miss Emily, when did you last see your sister-in-law, Marsha? Uh, not for days, poor thing. I see. Uh, Sergeant Muggan, did you send the kitchen knife down to the laboratory? Yeah, Chief. Uh, they're working it over for fingerprints right now. The kitchen knife? That was the murder weapon, Miss Emily. Uh, but there could be a great many fingerprints on that knife. I mean... Probably all of us picked it up at some time or other. You don't have to worry, Miss Emily. Not if you haven't been here for days. Yes, of course, but... Well, you can't tell, Inspector Thorne. I'm a little slow on the uptake, Miss Emily, but... I think you're lying to me. At what time today were you in this house? I wasn't here. I... I might as well tell you. In a murder case, that is the only policy to follow... Well, Inspector Thorne, I came here at two o'clock this afternoon. Marsha and I had a little chat, and then I left. And during the course of that little chat, you picked up the kitchen knife and threatened to kill her. Arnold, you said you wouldn't tell the police anything. What? Emily, Looks I... Looks like you've been holding out something, too, Mr. Winters. Just what did happen, Emily? I'd like your version of it. Marsha laughed at me. She said she wouldn't give up my fiancé, Eric. She said she and Eric had plans that didn't include me. When I picked up that kitchen knife, I only wanted to frighten her. I never would have used it to kill her. Marcia said she wouldn't give up your fiancé, Eric. That's what she said. Imagine her. My brother's wife saying that. It was just the way I told Arnold. Emily, you must... Why shouldn't I tell the police what you knew about Marcia and Eric? You told them about me. Your brother didn't, Miss Emily. You did. Looks like you're saving me a lot of trouble here. Don't like to use my brain any more than I have to. What? You and your brother's young wife were fighting it out over some man named Eric. And she was murdered. Now, just who is this Eric? Eric Stevenson. He's an investment broker. Mm -hmm. About the same age as your brother, I guess. Why, no. Eric is 25 years younger. But why bring Eric into it? Marsha promised me to put Eric out of her life entirely. Sergeant Muggan, check up on this man, Eric Stevenson. Maybe he didn't want to be put out of the murdered woman's life. Right, Chief. Now, Mr. Winters... What do you know of this man, Eric Stevenson? I've never met him or heard of him until today. Husbands are usually the last to know. I don't really think there was anything between Eric and Marsha. I'm just a jealous woman, I guess, Inspector Thorne, always imagining things. Imagining that Marsha told you she and Eric had planned. Imagining the kitchen knife with which you threatened her. Those won't be imaginary fingerprints that we find on the murder knife, Emily. Marsha was alive when I left this house, Inspector Thorne. If I were you, Inspector Thorne, I'd look into Eric Stevenson more closely. Mr. Winters, how long have you known about this relationship between your wife and Eric Stevenson? Only since this afternoon, since my sister Emily told me about them. I went to see Arnold as soon as I left, Marsha. I told him the whole story. That's right. 
And I was with Emily from that time until I came home. So you see, Inspector Thorne, I couldn't have killed Marcia. How do you know at what time your wife was murdered, Mr. Winter? I don't. I, I, I just meant if, if Emily and I were together all the time after she left Marcia in the kitchen alive... Where does Eric Stevenson live, Emily? He lives at the French Hotel, Inspector. I think he came here this afternoon and murdered my wife. Come on, Sergeant Muggan. We're going to the French Hotel to see Eric Stevenson. This is Eric Stevenson's room, Inspector Thorne. I'll knock on the door. Good afternoon. I'm Inspector Thorne. This is Sergeant Muggan. You're Eric Stevenson? Uh, yes, but Come I... Come inside with me, Muggan. I'm sorry, Inspector Thorne. I haven't time to talk to you right now. I'm expecting a lady. What lady, Mr. Stevenson? I'm sure that could be of no interest to you, Inspector. It may be of great interest, Mr. Stevenson. I'm investigating a murder. A murder? Who? Who is the lady you're expecting? Just a friend of mine. Name of Marsha Winters. She's a bit late. At what time was she expected? At three o'clock. It's almost four now, but Marsha's often late. Inspector Thorne, has anything happened to Marsha? Marsha Winters was stabbed to death at exactly 2.30 this afternoon. Oh, no. No, it isn't possible. I... How I... well did you know Marsha Winters? Just... Casually, Inspector Thorne. Do your casual women friends always drop into your hotel rooms alone? You don't understand. Oh, yes, I do understand, Eric Stevenson. I understand that you and Marcia had plans. Secret plans. The kind casual friends don't have. Who told you that? Marcia's sister-in-law. Your fiance, Emily Winters. I see. All right, Inspector Thorne. Marcia and I were in love. We were planning to run away together just as soon as we had enough money. What do you mean by enough money? I don't know. That was all Marsha's idea. She said she was going to make her husband, Arnold, pay for being so mean to her. Arnold says he and his wife are ideally happy. That's a lie. He says Marsha insisted upon doing her own housework because she liked taking care of their home. The old skinflint probably made her do it. Marsha was in the kitchen defrosting the refrigerator. At the time, she was murdered. Arnold must have killed her when he found out about us. And you might have killed her, Eric. I? I loved her, Inspector Thorne. Love has been known to turn into hate. Murderous hate. But what reason would I have to kill Marsha? Anyway, I couldn't have. Not if she was killed at 2.30. It takes almost an hour to get to my hotel from her house. And I was here in my hotel room at 3 o'clock, waiting for Marsha to keep our appointment. She telephoned me this morning. You can check with the hotel switchboard. She called and said she'd be here at three. Sergeant Muggan, go to the door. I think we have an eavesdropper. Oh, now let me go. No, you I... don't. Get inside, you. Bob, what are you doing here? Who is this young man? That's Marsha's stepson, Bob Winters. Do you make a practice of listening at keyholes, Bob Winters? Where this skunk is concerned, I do a lot more. Bob always hated his stepmother, Inspector Thorne. And why shouldn't I? The way she took Dad for a ride. I heard her make that phone call to you, Stevenson. I made up my mind I'd catch you two together. What purpose would that serve, Bob? Dad would have to believe me then and get rid of her for good. That was my plan, Inspector Thorne. So your plan, Bob, was to get rid of your stepmother for good. Was it a plan that you've already carried out? A plan of murder? Inspector Thorne in the defrosted refrigerator murder clue will return in just a moment. But first, we'd like to take just 60 seconds of your time to tell you a little about some of the programs we've prepared for your summer radio entertainment. This evening, be sure to hear Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons. Tonight, Mr. Keene brings you the mysterious story of the Abandoned Well Murder Case. Then on Sunday, we have Tom Conway as the debonair gentleman detective known as the Saint. Then there's screen actor Lloyd Nolan in another fast-moving, hard-hitting story as Martin Kane, Private Eye. Later, actor Carlton Young comes to the NBC microphone in the double role of Philip Galt and The Whisperer. Top Sunday evening off with security agent Mr. Moto. Japanese-American security agent fighting against the evil forces which would plunge the world 
into another global conflict. Then on Thursday, travel to the world of the future with stories bringing you the very best in science fiction on Dimension X. There you have it. A full schedule of programming designed to bring you the very best in radio entertainment morning, noon, and night over this, your NBC station. Now, back to Inspector Thorne and the defrosted refrigerator murder clue. Investigating the murder of Marsha Winters, Inspector Thorne discovers that she was planning to leave her wealthy husband, Arnold, and run away with Eric Stevenson, her sister-in-law's fiancé. While Inspector Thorne and Sergeant Muggan are questioning Eric Stevenson at his hotel, they discover the murdered woman's stepson, Bob Winters, listening at the door. And now we hear Inspector Thorne saying, That was your plan, wasn't it, Bob? To murder your stepmother, Marsha, and then come here and put on this act to convince the police of your innocence. Marsha, dead? I didn't know. That's what you'd like us to believe. Why did you kill her? Look, Inspector Thorne, I won't pretend that I'm sorry my stepmother is dead. I'm not. I hated her. Hated what she was doing to Dad. But I know nothing about her being murdered. I didn't even know she was murdered until you just told me. Where have you been all day? What? Just wandering around? Just wandering around. Hmm? It may interest you, Bob, to know that you have the weakest alibi of any suspect. Eric Stevenson says he was right in this hotel room at the time of the murder. As for your Aunt Emily and your father, they say they were together. Aunt Emily and father? Eric Stevenson here says your father didn't treat your stepmother well. Eric's a liar. I'll tell you something, Inspector. My stepmother was doing her own housework. Why, Bob? Your father's a very rich man. Because she was paying me off. Paying me every cent she could get together. So I wouldn't tell Dad about her having an affair with Eric. So you go in for blackmail. And murder. Why should I kill Marcia? I was getting plenty from her. Every cent she could get from Dad, including the money he gave her to hire servants to do the housework. Work she did herself. Sergeant Muggan. Yes, Chief. Telephone headquarters and see if the boys have uncovered that information I asked for. Right away, Chief. And then, Muggan, you and I are returning to the murder house to have a further talk with the murdered woman's husband, Arnold Winters, and his sister, Emily. And we're taking Eric Stevenson with us. <laughs> Come in, Inspector Thorne, Sergeant Muggin. Hello, Stevenson. I see your sister Emily is still here, Mr. Winters. Shall we all go into the living room? What is it, Inspector Thorne? Why have you brought Eric with you? Please sit down, Emily. All of you. I have questions to ask. Oh, nothing to be alarmed about. Uh, of course, Inspector Thorne. Go, go right ahead. You, Mr. Winters. Did you have many arguments? My wife, Marcia, and I never argued. Arguments with your son, Bob, about money. Arguments with Bob? Of course not. Bob knew he could come to me for anything he needed. I'm not so sure of that, Inspector Thorne. Only the other week, Bob borrowed some money from me, his aunt. Emily. How about Eric Stevenson, Miss Emily? How much money has he borrowed from you? Not a penny. That's absolutely right, Inspector Thorne. Eric never asked me for money. But you did go out together. Well, naturally, Inspector Thorne. The theater, the best nightclubs. Eric and I always had a wonderful time. Considering that Eric is practically penniless... That's very interesting. Eric's an investment broker. My men have checked that, Emily. Eric Stevenson is not a broker. In fact, he has no visible means of support. And no bank account. What if I haven't? Is that a crime, Thorne? Men who are penniless don't usually take their fiancés to expensive nightclubs, Eric. All right. I paid the check. Because I wanted to. Eric and I loved each other. That was all that mattered. Is that right, Eric? Entirely, Inspector Thorne. How many women did you love, Eric? Your fiance Emily, your fiance's sister in law, Marsha. Was that the trouble? You loved too many women, and so you had to eliminate one from your life? I did love Emily, Inspector Thorne, until I met Marsha. Then no one else counted. Eric! I'm sorry, Emily. But there was something about Marsha that wove a spell about me. I couldn't think of anything else. And you even forgot about Emily Winter's money. Or did you decide that you could get more from Marsha through her husband, Arnold? Inspector Thorne. 
I think Arnold Winters knew about his wife, Marsh, and me being in love from the very beginning. Inspector Thorne, you must believe me. I had no idea, no inkling that there was anything between my wife, Marsha, and this man, Eric, until this afternoon. For a big banker, you seem to miss a lot that's going on around you, Arnold Winters. If you mean my wife's affair with this man, I didn't know anything about it. And you saw nothing strange in the fact that your wife did not use the money you gave her to hire servants, but did all the housework herself. And you did not know that your own son, Bob, was blackmailing your wife, his stepmother. What? You are a very innocent man, Mr. Winters. Suspiciously innocent. I'll take it, Inspector Thorne. Hello, Sergeant Muggin talking. What? When? Okay, I'll tell the chief. Inspector Thorne, can I see you outside a minute? Everybody wait in here, please. Come along, Sergeant Muggin. That was headquarters, chief. You had one of the boys tailing the steps on Bob Winter. And he caught young Bob trying to leave town? Yeah, he's bringing him down to your office. Say, how did you get the idea he tried to make a getaway, Chief? Just one of my hunches, Muggett. Now, in Inspector Thorne's office at the Homicide Bureau, we see him with Bob Winters, the stepson of the murdered Marsha Winters, and we hear Inspector Thorne say, Men who have nothing to conceal, don't try to run away, Bob. I didn't kill my stepmother. What did you do with the blackmail money your murdered stepmother, Marsha, gave you? I'm not answering any questions, Inspector Thorne. Because you can't. There was no blackmail money. Well, I... I lost it gambling. No, you didn't. Or we'd have found that out. You made up that story of getting blackmail money from your murdered stepmother in order to protect your father, to draw suspicion away from his having killed her. Dad didn't kill Marsha. You knew your father's alibi was phony. He wasn't with your Aunt Emily at the time his wife was murdered. You can't trick me like that, Inspector Thorne. It isn't a trick, Bob. You saw your father drive away from your Aunt Emily's house long before the murder time. Yes. Yes, everything you said is right. Except about Dad being guilty. He didn't kill Marsha. Do you say that, Bob, because you know who did kill her? No. Well, I think I know. Sergeant Muggan. Yes, Chief? Let Bob Winters wait in the other room. Right out here, Bob. Okay, Inspector Thorne. Bring me that money that the searching squad found and all the information from the banks. And then, Muggan, pull in the other suspects immediately. I'm ready to uncover the killer. Got them outside, Inspector Thorne. Arnold Winters, the murdered woman's husband, his sister Emily, and her fiancé, Eric Stevenson. Who do you want in here first? Bring them all in, Sergeant Muggan. All of you, come in. I hope you have good reason for dragging us all down here this way, Inspector Thorne. Yes, Mr. Winters, I have. Have you ever seen this bank book before? Where did you get that? In your house, Mr. Winters. Among your murdered wife's belongings. It's a joint checking account you had with your wife, Marsha. An account which you closed over a month ago... After you discovered that she had withdrawn $25,000 from it. What if I did? She had no right giving my money to Eric Stevenson. He's lying. Never mind that, Eric. I suppose, Arnold Winters, you realize what you have just admitted. You've admitted that you knew about your wife and Eric Stevenson over a month ago, at least. Marsha was a cheat. I've known about her and Eric all along. Marsha was worse than that, Inspector Thorne. Worse than that. My men discovered something that might interest you, Emily. There was no money among your sister-in-law, Marsha's belongings. But we found money somewhere else. That was my money. Do you always keep $50,000 in cash in your house? My brother Arnold gave it to me this afternoon. My dearest sister was blackmailing me, Inspector Thorne. Emily said she'd tell you I'd known about Marsha and Eric all along. So you gave your sister Emily $50,000 to keep her quiet. But you wouldn't give your wife, Marsha, enough to hire servants to look after that big mansion of yours. I gave her money. She gave it to Eric Stevenson. That's why she did her own housework. Letting your sister blackmail you for $50,000 makes you look like our man, Winters. Dad didn't kill her, Inspector Thorne. Bob, you always jump quick to your father's defense, don't you? But, Inspector, you said... I was saying that your stepmother, Marsha, by being forced to work in the kitchen, has pointed out the murderer to me. Emily... Yes, Inspector Thorne? Would you choose to defrost the refrigerator, Emily, at a time when you were planning to leave the house? Of course 
course I wouldn't, Inspector Thorne. Everything in it would be spoiled. Exactly. Yet one of you here said as your alibi that you were expecting the murdered Marsha Winters to visit you at three o'clock, a short time after Emily saw Marsha start to defrost the refrigerator in the kitchen. Marsha telephoned and made the appointment with me, Inspector Thorne. You can check the hotel switchboard. And Bob told you he heard her make the call. Yes. And that seems to let you out, Eric. Out? I was never in. I guess I was just plain dumb suspecting you in the first place. Well, everybody makes mistakes, Inspector Thorne. I don't hold anything against you. Instead of thinking about you, I... I guess I should have turned my ideas to that defrosted refrigerator. Defrosted refrigerator? Mm. It strikes me as funny that a, a woman doing her own work like Marsha was would start to defrost her refrigerator if she were going out. Mm-hmm. That is odd. But I don't know much about defrosting refrigerators. No housewife would make such a mistake, especially in summer. A smart murderer would have turned the current back on and shut the refrigerator door. Yes. I'd say a a man did the murder. If it weren't for another puzzling thing. What, Inspector Thorne? This lady's handkerchief I found stuffed back in the freezing compartment of the refrigerator. Emily! Emily, you must have been crazy. That's your handkerchief. So you killed Marsha. I admit that handkerchief is mine, Inspector Thorne. I admit it's mine, but I swear I didn't murder Marsha. I don't know how it got there. I must have dropped it on the floor when I was quarreling with Marsha. Emily, do you think Inspector Thorne will believe that? In my slow-thinking way, I do believe her. Then you are stupid. This handkerchief was used to wipe the fingerprints from the murder knife. And you, Eric Stevenson, used it for that purpose after stabbing Marsha. What gives you that idea, you stupid fool? A woman wouldn't be any more likely to put her handkerchief in the freezing compartment of a refrigerator... Then she would to start defrosting it just before going out. Do you think you can send me to the chair on a stupid idea like that, Thorne? Your fingerprints are on the handkerchief, Stevenson. No. Oh, yes. They show on a fabric as well as on anything else. I... I never thought of that. And you didn't think we'd find out that you got a second telephone call at your hotel today. What? A call from Marsha, breaking her three o'clock date with you. Lucky for me that the hotel operator, not being busy on a warm summer afternoon, listened in. All right. Marsha did break her date with me. Said she promised Emily not to see me again. I was mad about her. I went out to her house and murdered her. (laughs) But don't pin any flowers on yourself, Thorne. For getting me, it was all luck. A dumb cop like me needs all the luck that comes his way. These handcuffs are for you, Eric Stevenson. And so ends the defrosted refrigerator murder clue. The part of Inspector Thorne is played by Carl Weber. Direction by Kenneth McGregor. The script was written by Geraldine Merkin and Edward Francis. Based on the original radio play by Frank and Ann Hummert. This is Fred Collins inviting you to tune in again next Friday at the same time when the National Broadcasting Company will present Inspector Thorne in The High Style Murder Case. Stay tuned for Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, on NBC.